It's quite fitting that Marilyn Vossivant's last name in French means learned. Learning came easy to her, considering she has an IQ of 228. Vossivant was born in St. Louis, Missouri on August 11, 1946 to immigrants from Germany and Italy. Her parents never told her she was exceptional. She once said in an interview, no one really paid much attention to me, mostly because I was a girl and I accepted that. But the world would pay attention in 1985 when she topped the Guinness Book of World Records list as the smartest person in the world. She was nearly 40 when she shot into the spotlight. Parade Magazine wrote a profile on her and readers had so many questions for her that the magazine offered her a Sunday column, Ask Marilyn, which exists to this day. In this column, she ignited one of the fiercest debates in probability of the 21st century. In 1990, a reader asked her the following question. Suppose you're on a game show and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car, behind the others, goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host, who knows what's behind the doors, opens another door, say number three, which has a goat. He says to you, do you want to pick door number two? Is it to your advantage to switch your choice of doors? This is known as the Monty Hall problem, named after the former host of the game show, Let's Make a Deal. Is it behind door number one or door number two or door number three? So would it be in your interest to switch from door number one to door number two? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Most people assume that both doors are equally likely to have the prize, so they don't see the benefit of switching. However, Voss Savant replied, yes, you should switch. The first door has a one in three chance of winning, but the second door has a two in three chance. She got so much heat for this response and couldn't have imagined the backlash that would follow. She received thousands of angry letters and said 90% of them told her she was wrong. Scott Smith, who has a PhD from the University of Florida wrote, there is enough mathematical illiteracy in this country and we don't need the world's highest IQ propagating more, shame. Here's a letter from Professor Robert Sachs of George Mason University. You blew it. As a professional mathematician, I'm very concerned with the general public's lack of mathematical skills. Please help by confessing your error and in the future, being more careful. Don Edwards of Oregon put it this way. Maybe women look at math problems differently than men. But actually the people who sent her the not so friendly letters were absolutely wrong. Switching your door does increase your probability of winning the prize. When you first choose door number one, there's a one in three chance that the prize is behind that one and a two in three chance that it's behind one of the other two. But then the host steps in and gives you some help by opening up the door they know is a loser. So door number two must have the rest of the chances. It went from having a one in three chance to a two in three shot at the prize since the host filtered out the bad door for you, door number three. Switching doubles your odds of winning. Or put another way. So yeah, I'll take door number two and Thank you for the extra 33.3%. The outcry against Vassavon was so extreme that she felt compelled to devote several other columns to explaining her logic. She noted that the benefits of switching can be proven if you were to play through the six games that exhaust all possibilities. This is contingent on the host always opening a door with a goat. Mapping out all the possibilities shows there's a higher chance of winning if you switch than if you stay. It's easier to understand the problem if there are many more doors. Say you chose one door out of 100. The host then eliminates 98 doors that they know don't have a prize behind them. That leaves two doors, the one you chose and the only other one remaining. Do you switch now? Absolutely. When you first picked, you only had a one in 100 chance of getting the right door. The odds of it being behind the other doors was 99 out of 100. The host then filters out the options for you by eliminating 98 bad doors that they know don't have the prize. This is to your advantage because it leaves the remaining door with the rest of the odds, a 99 out of 100 chance of having the car. Some eventually admitted they were in the wrong. A team at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology worked on the problem. And afterwards, Seth Coulson of MIT admitted, you are indeed correct. My colleagues at work had a ball with this problem. And I dare say that most of them, including me at first, thought you were wrong. To which she responded, thanks MIT, I needed that. As for that math professor I mentioned earlier who sent that not so friendly letter, Professor Sachs later conceded, after removing my foot from my mouth, I'm now eating humble pie. I vowed as penance to answer all the people who wrote to castigate me. It's been an intense professional embarrassment. Our biggest misconception is assuming that two choices mean a 50-50 chance of something happening. This makes sense if we don't have any other information. 
If I picked two people and asked who would win a tennis match and you don't know anything about them, you have a 50-50 shot of getting it right. But if I said player A just took out the sport yesterday and player B has won Wimbledon, this would likely change your choice. Information matters. Just like when the game show host knew which door had a goat, they weren't opening up a door randomly. So the more you know, the more informed decisions you can make. Vassavant once said, people that we think are very smart are not necessarily very smart. She explained they're more likely to be educated or experienced rather than intelligent. What does she think is holding people back from their intellectual potential? She's been critical of compulsory schooling because she says students learn passively. They sit there and are told what to believe instead of learning to think independently. She went so far as to say, I would rather not see compulsory schooling. As for herself, she never graduated from university, dropping out of Washington University in St. Louis after two years to start a career in investment before following her real passion, writing, leading to her famous answer to the problem that stumped the world. There's another way to learn that doesn't involve sitting in a classroom. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform that helps you brush up on your math, science, and computer science skills. Speaking of the Monty Hall problem, my sponsor Brilliant has an entire course on probability, which explores misconceptions that can arise, including that famous brain teaser. If you're ever stuck, don't worry, you can look at the explanation for more. There's something for everyone, whether you're a beginner or simply want to improve on what you already know. You can solve puzzles with science through their scientific thinking course. One of my all-time favorites is their logic course, which helps improve critical thinking that forms the basis of mathematical reasoning. Brilliant is free for you to sign up by going to the custom link in my description or pinned comment, brilliant.org slash newsthink. The first 200 people to use my link will get 20% off their premium membership, which gives you access to all of their courses. Thanks for watching. For Newsthink, I'm Cindy Palm.